Will they be able to hear us with the cars? They're hearing us right now. They are hearing you right now. Oh, there they we are. Go. Well, good, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Pastor Mary St. John Lutheran. I'm Pastor David of Epiphany Lutheran. And we're glad to be with you tonight. It's going to be a little noisier. We had decided we need to be out on our front porch because the rain's going to be coming in the next 10 minutes. And usually we're together longer than that. So uh, just a happy Mother's Day to all you mothers and to all of you women who mother other people who care for them. We just wanted to mention to you if you would like to share a little video saying thank you to mom, grandma, aunt, friend, whoever, uh, would you please shoot a short video and send it to us by 2 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, we'll set, well, we'll say 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will do our best to put those together and put those on our Facebook pages on Sunday to share. So we'd love to share your greetings, your uh, thank yous. Um, with both of us having lost our moms, uh, it's a little bittersweet uh, this weekend because we are missing our moms. We're missing um, a number of women who have been like moms to us in our lives. But there's a lot of great moms out there and a lot of great women who care for others like moms. So. We want to celebrate you this weekend, so please, uh, please share that with us, and we'll be glad to uh, broadcast that and share that on Sunday. You have anything? You sounds like you did a great job of covering it. So okay. So all right. But well, I will start off by saying, by the way, did you know? So I, I have my list of, of 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 crazy things here for you today. So I just want you to know that I discovered that that if you ever go up to Connecticut, please know that if you go to the state of Connecticut, please know that you are not allowed to collect junk without a license. There you go. All right, that's very strange. For Fun Friday, we thought that was a good place to start. You didn't share that last week. I did not share that last all right, week. All right, all right. Pastor Mary, what do you got for us? Well, we're gonna have to go back and forth because I had all my jokes pulled up and forgot that we had to use the iPad for this i know i should know better but it's friday so uh give me a little grace so i'll tell a joke then you can tell things there we go we got some prayer requests to share tonight and uh some other things to lift up so all right so these jokes come from the reader's digest page uh, if you like any you can just put in reader's digest fake jokes um during a sunday service the pastor asked the congregation for their intentions we heard the usual request to pray for sick people and the acknowledgement for those who helped when a parishioner died, the somber mood was broken when the last intention was heard. A woman stood up and said, My granddaughter turned 16 this week and received her driver's license. Let us pray for us all. And I will say another, I think, ridiculous thing in Georgia. You can disagree with me if you like. But they are allowing teenagers to get their licenses without taking the driver's, uh, the driving part of the of the license and that is just crazy anybody who's gotten a license knows you need to be able to be scared real good by those drivers um license people so you can uh make and sure it, and you're it's, doing it it's right. really too bad that you all can't like like witness what's actually going on here that as pastor mary is is sharing about her feelings about this this latest development from covid 19 that our son, who will be taking a driver's license test soon, yes, is, in, we're in, is very it. happy about this latest thing. Although we're telling him that he no. will have to take a driving no. test. No. By the way, I want to quote to you Deuteronomy 14:21. So, Sam, do you know what Deuteronomy 14:21 says? No, I have no idea. What does it say? Well, here, let me tell you. Deuteronomy 14:21. Do not eat anything you find already dead. Although, you may give it to an alien living in any of your towns, and he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner. So all that roadkill, just remember, don't eat it, just give it to someone that's living nearby. Oh, lovely. Okay. No, thank you. I don't want the possum or the aardvark. Well, not aardvark. What is it? Armadillo. Armadillo. We have had an armadillo. Speaking of which, run over by our I just, I, and I've asked this question of our men's Bible study. I really want you all to think about it because my goal for some time while while we're here in Georgia is I want to see a live armadillo. So far, the only armadillos I've seen are the dead ones on the side of the road. 
And by the way, since he said it that way, we're not leaving Georgia anytime soon. We may never leave Georgia. We don't know. So I have a long time to be able to do this, yes. but it's been six years now and I still haven't seen one. I know we've just seen dead ones, which I didn't know armadillos lived in Georgia until we saw a few dead ones on the road. So, all right. Hopefully nobody's uh, in so, uh, bothered by one little word, but sitting on a bus just days after undergoing surgery at New England ba Baptist Hospital in Boston, my father noticed a passenger coming down the aisle with a standard issue hospital cane just like his. Pointing to it, my father asked the man, New England Baptist? Hell no, the man replied, Irish Catholic. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Hey, Sam. Yes. Do you know Proverbs 27, 14? I do not. What is it? Proverbs 27, 14 says, If a man loudly blesses his neighbor early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. Hmm. All right, here's a cute one for all you who love dogs and don't like squirrels. My sister's dog had been deaf and blind for years. When she started to suffer painful tumors, it was time to put her down. As I explained this to my seven-year-old son, he asked if Jazzy the dog would go to heaven. I said I thought she would and that in dog heaven, she would be healthy again and able to do her favorite thing, which was chasing squirrels. Jacob thought about that for a minute, then said, so dog heaven must be the same as squirrel hell. <laughs> I think that's pretty cute. So Pastor Mary, I got, I got a scripture for you now, okay? This is just so you be able to know. So, so I just in case, I want you to know that just in case, just in case right. there is any time that I ever get into a fight, I want you to remember Deuteronomy 25, 11, 12, right. 11 to 12. It? Deuteronomy 25, 11 to 12 says that if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Well, I will I just let him beat the buddy bloody pulp out of you. I'm That's right. You. There you go. I'm not gonna do anything about that. That's so. right. Well this one goes with the crazy weather we're having. It's really been an unbelievable spring. I'm telling you, any time that we're sitting wearing jackets in Georgia in May, uh, is I just don't remember the weather ever being like this. And I know it's gonna be colder for all my family and friends in Illinois and Kansas City and all over the Midwest, and if anybody on the East Coast is watching us, which I don't know that anybody is, but uh, you're, there might be snow this weekend, which is very unusual. So this was a, a good joke for you. Los Angeles weatherman, Fritz Coleman, after a year that included a few earthquakes, several wildfires, extreme winds, record flooding, and even some funnel clouds, came up with this little thing about California. California. More than a state, it's an Acts of God theme park. <laughs> I thought you would like very that. Nice, in California, very nice. so. Sam, I have a scripture for you to avoid. You ready for a scripture to avoid? Tell me a scripture to avoid. Sam, please do not follow the advice of Solomon in Proverbs 17:8. What's it say? It says, a bribe is like a magic stone in the eyes of those who get it. Wherever they turn, they prosper. In other words, Proverbs 17 says that you should go ahead and bribe people, okay? This is just an example about being careful about what pieces of scripture you should use. That's right, because there's plenty of them that contradict each other. And if you don't know any of them, we'll be glad to point them out for you. No problem with that one. All right, the sentence in the Thanksgiving edition of my church bulletin intended to say, thank you, Lord, for the many miracles we are too blind to see. But in what might have been a classic Freudian slip, the sentence read, Thank you, Lord, for the many miracles we are too blonde to see. Oh. Please don't get in trouble. Don't, please don't get mad at me, anybody who's blonde. I'm not saying anything about you. I'm just reading your joke. All, All right. right, Sam, I want to give you some advice if you go to Wyoming, okay? Mm -hmm. Sam, if you go to Wyoming, I want you to remember that it is illegal to cut, sever, detach, or mutilate more than one half of a sheep's ear. Be careful what you do with sheep in Wyoming. That's it. All right, here's one for my friends who are mature. Um, one of my friends is in charge of the part-time help 
hired by an old age home run by an order of nuns. She confided to the mother superior, a feisty little nun of 70, that she always felt uncomfortable giving the young girls the obligatory lecture about the need to be careful around certain of the older male patients. Okay, I hope this is good. I hadn't read this all the way through, so, okay. The mother superior volunteered to give it to her, give it for her, and eventually reduced my friend's 30 minutes of embarrassed rambling to a one-liner that has now become famous around the place. Girls, she announced, just remember, old ain't dead. <laughs> so just remember that. If you're still breathing, you're, you know, I'll be, hopefully you're young at heart, many of you are, and age, well, it's, it's more than a number because especially when we feel our aches and pains, we know it's more than a number, but there is great, there is still joy in growing older and it's better than the alternative, so. So, Sam, do you know how we know that Solomon was Lutheran? I have no idea. How did we know Solomon was Lutheran? Because in Proverbs 31, 6, he says, Give beer to those who are perishing, wine to those who are in anguish. So if you're out there with your drink of choice tonight, and it's beer or wine, just know that you have a kindred heart in Solomon. Aww. All right, here's a funny one. You got to listen to the end, so don't go getting upset, because it is a joke. At an ecumenical roundtable discuss, discussion, various religious leaders tried to answer the question, when does life start? At conception, said the Catholic priest. No, no, said the Presbyterian minister. It begins at birth. It's in between, said the Baptist. Life begins at 12 weeks when the fetus develops a functional heartbeat. I disagree with all of you, said the rabbi. Life begins when your last child leaves home and takes the dog with him. But I'm fine. I like that one. That's good. Well, I just got one more scripture to, to, to share after right. this. So, all right, all so, right, well, so, so, we got Samuel saying, I, I'm going to do another joke and then we'll... Okay, so my last scripture for you for tonight, also from Proverbs, Proverbs 29 to 20. I might have shared this last week. If I did, I'm sorry. Listen to it again. There is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. All right, this joke is for Lutherans. I love it. It's very funny. My six-year-old son was excited about his Halloween costume. I'm going to be the Pope, he said. Ian, you can't be the Pope, I said. You're not Catholic. You're Lutheran. Ian hadn't thought about that. So he considered his alternatives. After a few minutes, he asked, is Dracula a Lutheran? <laughs> I think that's really cute. There we go. I think that's really cute. All right, I'll move. Sam, come on over. We can have him sit in between us. Yeah, so he's going to do a classic that we asked him for. If you're young, you may not know this song, although Sam says he knows it. Sam has told, um, Sam has told us that he's made fun of it in the past, so, so we forced him to play it instead. And it's Kumbaya. Uh, yeah, it's Kumbaya, my lord. Uh, it's five verses. I hope you guys enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, but if you guys have any songs that you want to suggest besides this, you know, please let us know and I'll make sure to play them.
Thank you, Sam. And those who don't know, Kumbaya means come by here. So come by here, Lord. Come by here. We used to sing that at Girl Scout camp when I was Girl Scout eons and eons ago. So thank you, Sam. Um, okay, I want to share just another joke or two. Um, let's see. An elderly couple admitted by St. Peter through the pearly gates found conditions that were just heavenly. Said the man to his wife, I could have been here two years ago if you hadn't have fed me all that oat bran. <laughs> Pretty good. I like that one. All right. Let's see. One more. Um, um, hang on. Okay. Oh, this. Oh, shoot. My jokes went my way. Well, I accidentally hit it wrong. So I'll have to save that one for next week. All right, so I want to share a few prayer requests, uh, friends, that I saw prayer requests online today. And as always, if you have prayer requests, joys as well, um, thanksgivings, please share those with us, and we'll do our best to share those in worship. Um, and I have not sent out a note this week, but I hope to do that soon. So uh, before I share those, though, I just want to mention, and Pastor David may want to say something too, we are forming, we have a task force that will be working on uh, reading articles and uh, listening to what the bishop has to share with us about uh, what we need to think about if we are to reopen. Um, I know for St. John, we are uh, talking about the possibility of opening maybe mid-June, but that's just a conversation right now. There's nothing for certain as of, as of this time, um, but there are a number of things that we'll be doing, um, and uh, we hope to be having a Zoom meeting next week to have more discussions. Um, and we will be guided by what the scientists, what CDC, and the scientists have to tell us as we need to pay close attention to that. Because as much as we want to worship together, we need to do everything we can to protect each other and to keep each other safe. Especially anyone who might either themselves have a compromised immune system or have a loved one who has a compromised immune system. So, and I will tell you that we will continue to offer worship online. Even whenever we do go back to worship in the uh, sanctuary, we will continue to have the service online. And it will be available during the service and also be online afterwards. And will continue to be on, put up on YouTube as well. So just know that we're not going to discontinue that. We've been able to reach a lot of people. And uh, we want to continue to provide that opportunity for people to worship uh, with us online, especially those who might not feel comfortable uh, to come back to church um, whenever that day may be. Yeah, and that would be, just be a reminder too for Epiphany folk as well is know that we're going to be meeting next week. Both our worship committee will be meeting next week as well as as uh, our church council will be meeting. And it's more to say that uh, when it's at point that we do uh, come back together for public worship, things will be a little different. You know, we need to make sure to keep things safe. We'll let you kind of know more about that uh, as as uh, we get closer to that time. As soon as we know something, we will let you know. Uh, but uh, it's all a way of, of being able, you know, God gave us a brain for a reason. We seek to use them and use them wisely. 
as we uh, enter back in this time because we, we do have your best interest and your health at, at heart and we want to be able to make sure that you know that as well and that we're being responsible when we do gather back together. And we do want to thank uh, those of you who have been able to support both of our congregations in your giving um, as you give back to God. And we more than understand those of you who may be struggling or may be out of work, you're not uh, able to give uh, that way, but we know that there's other ways you can serve people. So we hope that you continue to reach out to each other. And if there's someone special in your life who has been a mother figure, figure to you, I hope you'll reach out to them this weekend and tell them thank you and tell, tell them what you're thankful about them for. Um, because there's so many ways that we can serve God in our lives. Um, but we are very grateful for those of you who are able to continue to support the ministry of the congregation of our congregations. Um, a few prayer requests today. So I got a message uh, special on Sunday. Jill and Julie Gates are playing their instruments again. So I'm very excited. They're playing their saxophone and their trumpet. And uh, Julie and I were um, conversing today and a couple prayer requests came from her. She said, do you pray for dogs? And I said, of course I pray for dogs. Dogs are Part of a family and i pray for cats i'll pray for your pet parakeet so um so um she uh julie asked for prayers there jill and julie sisters their dog may have lupus um riley so they asked for prayers for riley and also their mom and dad kathy and bill's dog winston will be having surgery on monday and they're very concerned about him and so we um we pr we pray that all will go well with the surgery and we just pray that Winston will make it through. I also want to pray for my friend, uh, Debbie Hippen Schultz, who lives in Arizona. Her husband, Ron, is a veteran. He's had a lot of health problems over the last number of years, but um, Debbie put up today that he had some very serious, um, something wrong with his heart today, and they took him to the VA hospital, and of course, she's not able to be with him. So we pray for peace for Debbie, and we pray that they'll be able to figure out what's going on with Ron. We pay for all their family, uh, just in this time that they will have peace in the waiting. Pray that they'll be able to connect with each other. And uh, we pray that they will figure out what's wrong with Ron and be able to take care of it so that he'll be able to go home. Um, I wanna pray for a, a classmate, colleague of ours, Susan, who is, um, we're celebrating that she's cancer free, remains cancer free, but she uh, was diagnosed that she has pneumonia and has kept her down and she has three more weeks of recovery so we pray that she'll be able to rest and take it easy and that she'll just be able to recover from that we continue to pray for our friends larry holsketter and don jones who both are fighting the brave fight against um stage four um pancreatic cancer and we pray for our very very dear friend who we love so dearly in christ libby warden who uh, her wonderful sister sandy drove her to mayo clinic in minnesota and today was her last day of testing and we just pray they'll be able to figure out what's causing so much pain for Libby and be able to find a way to relieve her so that she may continue to share her beautiful voice um, with so many people as she has for many, many years and that she'll be able to continue to do that. Um, also, we pray for um, Larry Johnson. Uh, he is a member of Christ the King. He also was put in the hospital. He has pneumonia and his wife Kathy cannot be with him. And so um, we just pray that Larry will heal and we pray for Kathy while they are apart and just ask for God's uh, healing hand to be on Larry and all the doctors and nurses that take care of him. Um, also, Julie shared, and this is gonna be a concern across not only our state, but across other states. She said that there was gonna be a furlough uh, for, I think she, I'm going to get it wrong, Julie. I think you're at Clayton State, but she said there's a 14% cut in the budget for the fall. Um, I'm expecting that a lot of colleges are going to be affected, and so there's a lot of people we know who work at colleges and teach at colleges, and she said they're going to hear something next week about the furloughs. So we're just praying for all of you who might um, be teaching or working at a college, whether it's in Georgia or somewhere in the country. We know that a lot of things are going to be affected and, you know, we just want to see things come back as well as possible while also protecting um, one another's health and being there for each other. So, uh, Julie, we're praying for you. We're praying for everyone else we know who might be affected by this and we're just praying for 
uh, good answers and clarity and that things can get back on track as soon as possible. Do you have any uh, prayer requests? Oh, I just would lift, lift up the one prayer request I lifted up last night. We want to lift up uh, Gary Bowman in our prayers. Gary, our seminary student, his uh, brother Daniel Hawkins passed away this week of a massive heart attack. Uh, Gary uh, was going up to uh, Ohio today. I think they were going to have, try to have a service of some sort, of course, uh, with with the restrictions that they that are still in place. But having uh, the, Gary was leading that service, I believe, on Tuesday. So please keep Gary in, in your prayers and his travel as well as uh, comfort for the whole family at the, the death of his brother, Daniel. And we also pray for Gwen Flowers Taylor, whose mom... Ruby, I believe, has been diagnosed with COVID-19. We pray that she will recover from this and uh, make it back. Um, and Ken Bell from our congregation, who's been in the hospital, will be going to rehab soon. And so we just pray for him. And we pray for Elaine um, while they are apart. And just ask that God will lift them both up and uh, be with Ken and restore him to good health. Um, we also, I want to... Um, Pray for and, and think of Ahmad, the young man who was shot and killed in Georgia today. Would have been his 26th birthday, I believe. And many people in Georgia and across the country are running 2. Point, I think it's 2.3 miles for Ahmad because he was shot on February 3rd. I think it's right. It's 23rd. 2.3 miles. Um, I'm not a runner, but I will be walking. Uh, I've already been walking today. I'm going to walk 2.3 miles. Um, uh, God speaks uh, to work for justice and what has happened. Um, I, I personally, I don't normally say things like this, but I'm very grateful for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation stepping in. We pray that justice will prevail. We pray for his family, who I know is in deep mourning. And we pray that we will come to a place in our world where we will not judge people by the color of their skin or by so many other things and that we will treat them as God would want us to treat one another, and that we would love them as our neighbor, as ourselves, and not just jump to conclusions. And so I just pray that there will be justice in this case. And I'm very grateful for the team from GBI who stepped in. Julie, a member of our congregation, used to work with them, and she was very grateful too. We talked about that today. So um, we just we just pray for their family who we know is, is in pain and sorrow today and we pray that we will all come together and work for justice in this world so i've had you pray the last there we go. i realize every week i have you pray on friday because i usually i talk well, before that yeah, but is there anything else you want to no, say well no, we should good. say there's no devotions tomorrow night we take saturday night off um happy mother's day to all of you who will not be with us happy on mother's sunday day. Uh, last year we gave out carnations to all women as daughters of God, and I wish I could give those to you this Sunday, but we will not be with you in person. Uh, but we w just wish that you will have a wonderful weekend and uh, a very blessed time celebrating Mother's Day. Um, and we hope that you will join us for worship on Sunday. I said this yesterday. I'll say this again. Um, Samuel gets gets the he edits everything and puts it together. But he puts it up a little before 10 o'clock on the Facebook page. But I will start a watch party. It'll say watch party at 10 a.m. on Sunday. You can watch it anytime you want. But if you want to join the watch party so we can be talking to each other um, and communicating, consider joining the watch party on Sunday. I will set that up right before and it will start at 10 a.m. Same thing goes with Epiphany as well. So. so. And uh, also know too that I will let you know, I'm not sure if you have that, I believe you have this as well, that it's not just that you can watch this on Facebook, but you can also watch this on YouTube. Yes, you can so watch, watch on YouTube too. Watch for the links. For the Epiphany folk, please know that you can go to our um, Epiphany Lutheran Church uh, webpage. Uh, there will be a link to that that will be posted up there on Sunday morning to be able to get into the, uh, uh, to watch the service if you want to watch it on YouTube. Thank you for the boxes. If anybody wants me to bring you some strawberries next week, as long as the strawberry patch is open with them on Tuesday, they've had to close every few days because they've had so many people come out. But if they have uh, strawberries on Tuesday or Thursday, and you let me know. I'll bring you some strawberries. So uh, I won't. Get we do want to let you. you know that Southern Bell is not paying for for no, this broadcast. Southern Bell so. is not. They're so. not. But I'm hoping to do something soon where maybe I can go over there and say a little prayer in the field. So we'll see if they'll let me do that. And record it if they do so 
Uh, we pray for all our farmers, too, in the Midwest and all over the country. So let's pray. Loving God, we just thank you for bringing us together tonight to have a few laughs, to learn a few oddities, to sing a beautiful song, Kumbaya. Come by here, Lord. We ask you to come by here. Be with all the people we've named tonight. Uh, be with all those uh, who may be ill with COVID-19. Be with those who are mourning of losing loved ones. Be with those who are on the, the front lines. All our nurses, our doctors, our techs, watch over all of them. Uh, we thank you for them. We thank you for the work they do. We thank you for our teachers in this Teachers Week. We ask that you would bless them too and just watch over them as this school year winds down. We pray for all the graduates that there will be a future uh we know there will be a future that they can look forward to and we pray that they will find a way to celebrate their graduation we thank you for all the mothers and all the women who mother other people we we ask that you would bless each one of them this weekend with a wonderful time to celebrate we thank you for the many joys and blessings of our lives and we lift up all those who are in mourning tonight we especially remember ahmad's family in this very difficult time and for all who have lost their loved ones, either from violence or from suicide or from the COVID-19 or any other way in which their hearts are breaking, we ask that you would wrap your arms around them and that you would heal their weary souls. And now, dear God, before we go tonight, we lift up all our prayers to you, trusting in your most merciful grace and power and peace and love. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, dear friends, dear family, dear loved ones, stay warm, stay inside if the snow's come in your area, stay, um, enjoy, have fun. Uh, Blessings on you all. Have a good weekend and we'll see you on Sunday. Love to you all. Amen.